السلام علیکم آرمی پبلک اسکول اینڈ کالج خامیوان اٹس کلاس سیکنڈ ایئر اینڈ یور بایولوجی لیکچر از ہیئر چیپٹر از اسپورٹ اینڈ لوکو موشن اینڈ آر ٹاپک از مسلس کانٹریکشن یسٹرڈے وی ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ دا اسٹرکچر آف دا اسکیلیٹل مسلس دیٹ ہاؤ دا اسکیلیٹل مسلس آر پریزنٹ ان آور باڈی اینڈ ہاؤ دے آر ہیلپنگ فار دا پرپز آف دا موومنٹ سو اٹ واز آل ڈسکرائب اباؤٹ دا اسکیلیٹن that skeletal muscles are attached with the skeleton you can see here movement for voluntary striation is there light and dark bands were present one end of the muscles is attached with the bones and is known as the tendons muscles are made up of muscles bundles and muscles bundles are made up of muscle fibers and muscle fibers are composed of these myofibrils if you see the structure of myofibrils it is having the sarcomere that consists of the dark bands and the light band if you see the muscle fiber they are multi nucleated and their cytoplasm which is known as the sarcoplasm consists of the glycogen and myoglobin it was the ultra structure of the skeletal muscles here you have seen these all the parts muscles that are made up of muscles fibers and if you see the muscle fibers you can see here this is the outermost membrane the sarcolemma inside of sarcolemma the cytoplasm is present the sarcoplasm this is the whole structure of the myofibril inside of it if you see this myofibril it is having the dark and the light bands it is having this region sarcomere which, which consists of light color and dark color bands here is the ultra structure of the myofilaments we seen about the <clears throat> myosin and actin protein which are making the a band and the i band and here was the structure of the myofilament that how the how the dark band is present and it is consisting of myosin protein here this is all and the next part is of the actin that is the light band here you can see you can see that it is consist of three parts the actin protein which is twisted around each other like this this green line uh, this blue colors it is showing the actin one the tropomyosin is this one that is also spirally arranged and the third is the troponin it is having its three subunit one two and three three subunits so this myosin had attached with this troponin and it slides it over it over it in this way the muscles contract and relax now see the structure of the myofilament with this diagram okay yesterday i told you about the parts of the myofilaments the h zone and the i line okay this is the dark band the blue bands and these are the light bands the i bands are these light bands in the center you can see them and these are the dark bands the a bands you can see them also here is one line which is present between the i band this this line dark line which is present between the i band it is known as the z line this line is known as the z line fine next them is the uh in, in between these dark bands you can see this zone this white space this zone is known as the h zone so you can say that i band consists of z line and this is the hole from one z line to this z line this area is known as of sarcomere because it is having the light bands as well as the dark bands so z line and h zone is clear to you students next is the m line where is the m line the h zone is bisected by a dark line the h zone you can see here this is the h zone fine and here is again one blue dark line this is showing the h zone right and this dark line is called the m line so you have seen one is the uh, z line which is present on the i bands 
and the other is the H zone, which is present on the dark bands. And on an H zone, there is a dark middle line, which is known as the N line. It is bisected the H zone. The M line joins adjacent myosin filaments together at a point halfway along the length. Okay, so I think the Z line, M line, H zone, all is clear to you, right? The next is the sliding filament model. Okay, how we can say that light band slides over the dark bands? For this purpose, two scientists, H. Hoxley and A. F. Hoxley, in 1945, they give this sliding filament model. According to this model, what happens? Thick and thin filaments shifting. They are sliding over each other. Like thick filament is made up of myosin protein and the thin are made up of actin proteins and they are sliding over each other. That's why we say that it's a sliding filament model. What happens actually? You can see that actin, actin slides on the myosin. When this thing is happening, that one actin, uh, actin is light band, slides over the myosin dark band. What happened? The contraction process takes place of muscles. In this way, these three things happen. First thing is I band reduced length. For this, well, I would uh, like to show you I band. Okay, this is the I band, this is the A band, H zone, Z line, again Z line, fine. These are the dark bands. A band, this purple, right? And these green are the light I bands. And A bands. This is the whole structure. But when one contraction takes place, what happens? That I band reduced in length. Second thing, Z line get closer. Third thing, H zone disappear. So keep these three things in your mind very carefully. While the contraction of the muscles, you can see it is a relaxed muscles. It is in resting condition. You can see everything is relaxed here. Like A band, H zone, Z line. Everything is fine here, right? But if you see in the next diagram, the contracting muscles, you can see that this eye line was present first here. Now, these two eye lines are, uh, sorry, Z line. These two, Z, one Z line and the second one Z line is getting closer with each other. Second thing you can notice that this is the H zone area. You can see here the distance is large, but here you can notice the distance is very small. So the things that I told you that I band reduced length, I bands are reducing in length, like these are the I bands, fine. They are reducing in the length. You can see their length is reducing. I bands. Now what happened? H zone is also reduced. Z lines are getting closer with each other. You can see fully contract muscle here. The Z lines are very close. Here you can see that there was a great difference. Now you can see that they are very close. And the next thing you can see, is there any H zone in between this myosin and actin filament? No, there is no zone. It means H zone is disappeared when they slide over each other. They are getting closer with each other. H zone is just up here. The Z line getting closer to each other. The I band is reduced. So such things are happening when muscles contract and slide over each other. Next thing you can see that how the contraction of the cross bridges take place here. For this purpose, you must know students about this dark band that is made up of thick filament, the myosin filament. Myosin is having one head region here. This is the head region. Again, you can see. Notice this head region. And the thin filament is made up of three parts. You already know about that. One is the actin, this protein, which is twisted around each other. Above it, the tropomyosin, one binding site. It's mean, this is the binding site. You can check here when the myosin head is attached with the thin filaments. It gets attached with it. It, it binds with its tropomyosin site. You can also see here, this is the actin binding site. It's mean here the tropomyosin is present. And ATP is always utilized in this process where ATP changes into ADP and one phosphate is released here. I would like to show you one video animation.
Anyone share with you? Okay. What happened, class? That calcium, you know that you can move your muscles uh, with the help of the calcium. You say that for our muscles, for the movement, for the bones, this calcium is very compulsory because it sends a nerve impulse to our uh, to our muscles for the purpose of the movement. Now, when calcium comes, what happened? See it. You can see here are the light and dark bands. These are the dark bands and these are the light bands. This is the Z line, fine? And the A zone is disappearing because they are sliding over each other. Okay, here you can notice class, the calcium comes and it is helping for the sliding filaments model to slide off at the end, margin over each other. See the regulation by calcium ions, how the calcium ions comes and they have the myosin head to attached with this part, the binding side. You can see here, this is a sliding take this and how myosin, the thick filaments are sliding the thin filaments. They are making a cross bridges here, right? Again, calcium came. It is slide, sliding the thin filaments like this. What happened in this process? The need for ATP. Yes, obviously, when myosin gets attached with the binding site here, you can see that it has moved the thin filament and ATP was changed in the ADP. Again, the ATP will come and attached over here. The phosphate will be released. And now it is going to move the thin filament. Hence the sliding filament model is working with the help of ATP molecules. Ends of contraction and relaxation. When you are in resting condition, it will be like this. Hence, you can see the cross bridges. How they are helping for the process of the movement that you have seen. Now it's time to see about the antagonistic arrangement of skeletal muscles. What is the antagonistic? That is the opposite movements or uh, arrangement of muscles. You can see that one is origin. What is origin? For antagonistic movements, you must know about these few terminologies. The origin is a point where the bone is attached. This is a fixed point, right? And insertion is the other point, which is the free end is known as the insertion. Next, it is the flexor muscles and the extensor muscles. When muscles contracted, it is known as the flexor muscles. Fine. Next is the extensor muscles. Here you can see the process. It is contracting. The muscles are called the flexor when they contract like this. And when the muscles are in relaxed condition, they are known as the extensor muscles. And these are the opposite movements, the flexion and the extension, it is called the antagonistic movements. So if we see these movements in knee joints, that what is the origin point and what is the insertion point and how they are producing the antagonistic movement, for this purpose, I have taken the example of knee joints. So you can notice the flexion and extension in which part of the legs it is taking place. So you can see very easily with the help of this diagram, Okay, class, flexion. For flexion, you can see that it takes place, it is actually the, when muscles 
is carried out by the flexor muscles. Flexor muscles are those which are responsible for the contraction, right? So flexion is carried out by the flexor muscles. These are hamstring muscles. What are the hamstring muscles? These are present here. This is the structure of the leg, right? And this is the first bone, the thigh bone, which is called the femur. Next to it are the two bones, tibia and fibula. At this region, there are two muscles. The as you remember about your biceps and tricep muscles in your arms. In the same way, here are the hamstring muscles at rest. When what happened? Flexion is carried over the flexor muscles. Here, the hamstring region, right? Present at the back of the upper part of the leg thigh, the major hamstring muscles is bicep femoris. You can say that it is the bicep femoris. It has two region. Yes, from here it is having two region points. One with the pelvic girdle and the other one from the top of the femur. So it is having two origin points. And at insertion, the free end you can see here. This is the free end of this bone. The tendon divides into two portions to attach the upper part of the tibia and fibula. It is attaching here with two bones. Here you can see that insertion part is having two and one is the tibia and the other one is the fibula. Next, this is the extension. What happens in extension is carried out by the extensor muscles. Extensor muscles are those which relax here, just like this. Okay? Which are present in the front of the thigh. Abhi apne, uh, just before this, you notice the hamstring muscles which are present behind the thigh. Now, if you see on the upper side of the thigh, now you see if on the upper side of the thigh there is another muscle known as a quadricep femoris, which is present here, and they are helpful for the process of the extension. This is the quadricep femoris, which is present on the above side of the thigh. Okay, the main extensor muscles are quadricep femoris. They originate at the ilium and femur. Yes, from this point, you know, the pelvic girdle points, the ilium and the ischium. And if you see, uh, come together in tender surrounding patella and insert at the tibia. And if it, it is inserting at its insertion point is the tibia. Where the kneecap is present, fine. Here the kneecap is present. So this is the insertion end, and this is the origin end for both hamstring muscles and the quadricep of femoris. Just like your biceps and tricep muscles in the arm region. Hence, hamstring is a uh, hamstring and quadricep femoris on uh, in the thigh region. These muscles are present, which are helping for the process of the flexion and extension. These are two antagonistic movements, which are opposing movements to each other. It was all about the antagonistic arrangement of skeletal muscles. Is if there are any difficulty, please let me know so I could clear it. Yes, participants. Any question from your side? Mm -hmm. For sliding filaments model for the cross bridges and uh, antagonistic arrangement of skeletal muscles. If you have any query, do ask please. No question from your side? Say yes or no at least. No, Miss. 